Ben back with you in the Midwest Model Shop. In today's episode, we're going to go ahead and do some little uh, fire hose reels, I think, that around the superstructure that I'm going to use to replace the kit parts with. They were in the Pontos kit. I put the kit piece up. I looked at them. They've been bothering me ever since. I'm like, I just need to crack down and, and make those parts. So I go ahead and take care of that. Then we move on to the starboard side anti-aircraft positions for the three Bofors, kind of midship. Uh, there's a lot going on there. Basically, I'll show you how to install the uh, photo etch ammo racks that go around. We'll put on the ladders. I also will show you how to drill out the holes and put in the individual ladder rungs. Uh, then we paint it all up and put it together. And lastly, this is going to be it for a little while. Hopefully you enjoyed this video in the last two. I know they're kind of longer. Uh, I got to head to work tomorrow and uh, then my wife and I are going to take a little bit of a vacation. Uh, then I'll be back. I'm sure I'll have to go back to work. And so it'll take a bit to get kind of caught back up. Not to mention, um, I have to duplicate everything that I did in this video uh, for the port side of the ship. So there's no point in videotaping all that. Anyway, that's it. I hope you're all doing well. And uh, let's get into the build. All right, so as we come back from the last episode, remember I said there were some things I wanted to catch up on. So I'm going to start with right here on both sides. There's uh, basically another ledge like this that comes out where we put a bunch of anti-aircraft guns. And then there's some poles that uh, support it. So I want to go ahead and focus on getting that installed. So let's see if we can dig up the parts and move on that. All right, I found it. Uh, G14 and 15 going here. And then we got some M23 posts. There's only one on each of these sprues. So you need four sprues. So I'm going to get them cut out, paint it up, uh, I'll double check to see if there's any Ponto stuff that goes on here, and we'll get that installed. There it is installed, this is on the port side, uh, starboard side is also installed, and then we went ahead and included the uh, weapons locker, or the ammo locker, uh, and the posts. Bunch of real tedious work just to get one, two, three, four, five, six pieces installed. Uh, but the same is done up over here on the other side. Uh, I want to start taking a look right here at uh, some railing that should go in and then also on the front of this anti-aircraft gun position there's actually supposed to be a little like spot right there uh, that you have the gun director installed in that I didn't catch because it comes up later on here in the build. So uh, we're going to do that and take a look at the railing see what I can get installed along these edges. What I'm concerned about is like what you see right here that the railing will just kind of stop and hang off like that. Um, for some reason, Pontos thinks they should connect to the five inch gun turrets. I still don't know if I buy that though for the real thing. But anyway, uh, let's go ahead and work on those little details next. So here we go, uh, I installed the little spot for the anti-aircraft gun director and that little chunk of railing right there, port and starboard. So to the right, in this area right here, uh, goes some more railing. The problem is it's not clear in the instructions or at all how it attaches to the turrets. And it, it, it does, as far as I can tell, look like it's supposed to drape on the turret. So I'm going to leave that off for right now until um, we get more information. Uh, back here, there's a couple of places where I could put some... Uh, ammunition tubs. I'm going to go ahead and install those real quick and then let's start working in this area which actually uh, this is where the rear funnel goes and then there's some antennas and things that go right here so uh, probably going to paint this floor and then get that photo etch going and then we'll start working on these two areas where there's a total of six bofers I believe. So let's get ready to do that. Okay I changed my mind. Actually we're going to work on these little reels right here. My little OCDs kicking in. I, I don't like the way that they look. They've been robust and held up and not fallen off, but Pontos provides a far superior one and I used it earlier in the build. They're just a huge pain in the rear to put it together. They're super microscopic, teeny tiny, and one goes right there. You can see the little lines for it. So I'm going to make those. I'm sure somebody would like to see how I do it, so I guess that's what we'll cover next. Okay, so there's our little piece. I have my little broken piece of glass. 
underneath here to start off with making one you just need one so we'll we'll pick one out uh, using my number 11 exacto blade just like so and then you're left with your little piece right there uh, then you're gonna need 162 two of these guys right there keep it in the center so I don't know if you've noticed uh, the well I guess you would know because you don't have the instructions in front of you. These are the only three parts uh, to this reel right here. So there's no center section provided. Um, if all you had to do or all you want to do is fold these parts together and put these two pieces in, that's really easy. Uh, that's not what we want to do. Okay, so I would like to clean up the edges on this thing, and you got to pick them up, and you got to hold it, and there's a little nub right there. So what I do is I take my grease pencil, I pick it up with the grease pencil, I grab it whoop, with the tweezers, like so. Third time's the charm. And just clamp it into place, and then, uh, let's see. Yeah, you can make it out there. There's a little nub right there. Grab the sanding stick. I mean that's all it takes, just a little bit, and then we'll spin it around here. And it looks like there's another little spot right here. Yeah, that's it. You know, just just to clean it up. We got a little more right there. Looks like we do. All right. Okay. Now our piece is cleaned up. Let's fold the thing and get it together. All right, so we're gonna fold this piece, and, and this is worth pointing out. Um, if you see here, man, I don't know if I can get any closer, we'll try. That's it, where it's in focus. See the light lines right there? Those are our seams, and then we have the lines in the middle here. Um, these outside edges get folded, if you're looking at it, if, if we, as you're looking at it, let's say that this edge and this edge are gonna fold up at 90 degrees, right? So they'd be like this to you. And this is gonna be basin down. These outside edges fold away from you. So you need to make a decision about which way you're gonna fold it and what reference lines you're gonna use. I'm gonna go ahead and use these big long reference lines and fold these outside edges up like this towards us because I can figure out easily enough where these uh, other 90 degree angles are to fold it the other way. So I'll show you what I'm talking about here. We'll just slide it into our jig, like so. And that takes care of that. Let's do the next one. So, okay, there you have it. There's our little piece. Uh, hey, hopefully, you can pick out that detail there. We'll get in a little bit closer. It's folded up. Now, what I've done is successfully eliminated my ability to stick this thing in the jig. Uh, because it would need to go upside down with those folds being down like that and then folded. Uh, so that's not going to work out very well. But that's okay. We've got tweezers. So what I'll do is I'll just pick this up, get to focus here, and put the tweezers in and create my edge at 90 degrees and just fold it up like that and readjust this side get my 90 degree edge and you, you can flip it over uh, and check out your reference lines get it exactly where you want and fold it up fix that and just double check see it's not quite perfect so I'll use my fingers here to get it plumb at 90 there there you go see and that's a nice little detailed piece um, and you're all set-ish. 
right? Because now you got these two things. Now, what the kit will have you do is just pick up one of these guys, uh, glue it in, and and you're done. The problem is uh, you'll be left with what you see right there, a big hole in between. And we don't want a big hole. We want to fill that in and make it look nice. So how are we going to deal with that? So what you need is, well, you, you use whatever you got, but I have this aluminum tubing. It's uh, 1 16th inch in diameter. And uh, you're going to need your razor saw. Someone's going to ask, can you do this with a Dremel? Yes, but the Dremel's going to get the, really hot. The pieces is going to get hot. Uh, obviously, safety glasses, and odds are what you're about to do is going to go sailing off into creation. Uh, but what I want to do... Let's see if I can zoom in and show you this. What I want to do is take a piece of aluminum that will fit in between those two rungs and have room for both of the spools and just glue it into place. So the first thing you need to do, you could use a sanding stick. It works fine with aluminum. Uh, I have a miscellaneous set of files. But go to your piece of aluminum and on one end here, you need to get it as square as you possibly can uh, because when you go to cut it you're not going to have this it's 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 not going to cut straight I mean you, you could try the best you can but um, it's probably not going to happen unless you get a lot of practice and there are 16 of these to be made on the entire ship I did get better as I went but this is the first one I've done in a while so all right, so that's uh, what you end up with right there, and it's it's hollow on the inside. This is just stuff I got at the store. Okay, so now I want to cut a piece that I hope is the right width. This is all trial by error. Um, okay, so use something to try and get a measurement. Some idea of how wide you want these to be. I have these little caliper dealies and uh, put a scratch or something on here so you have some idea of where to start and then take your saw hold it down start at the back of the blade put it on your spot try and get as square as possible and just pull towards you don't go back and forth just pull right at you and see already, we've already cut through. And then you could turn it so that slice is about halfway through. You can also attach the uh, aluminum to some sticky tape if you want so that it doesn't go sailing anywhere. But uh, end up with that little piece. We'll just take it off. All right, then what I like to do, so now you've got this little microscopic piece again. Let's see if we get a focus there. Um, put it in some tweezers that are pretty heavy duty that are going to hang on to the whole thing. Now if I get to focus here, you'll see that uh, this is the back side that we cleaned up prior to starting. That was easy to do. Now i got to clean up this side. Not so easy to do. Uh, hold it in your tweezers and get the get the high spots off. Now, I want to point out that this is a definitely a trial by error process and that I have done this, got it all done, took a look at it and realized, oh yeah, it's too small. It's 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 just not wide enough. Okay. That's pretty good. I want to get the I want to get the high spots off. And this this is a, I mean, if you guys can't tell, this is a really microscopic part. So um, I'm sorry if it's coming in and out of focus, but I know people wonder how I deal with teeny, teeny, tiny things. Everyone has their, their methods. Uh, but the big deal is get it flat because you're going to try and get it flat. So see it's not, it's, I don't know if you can see there, it's not perfectly plumb. It's a little higher towards this side than it is on that side. 
you want to get it as plumb as you possibly can because when you put what we're going to do is we're going to put the um, little round reels on this piece it's pretty easy to attach it's much easier than creating this and then we're going to see if it fits and you want it to look right so all right that's done we'll put it in our tweezers we'll grab our little piece here sorry there's a glare from the light above and we're just gonna drag it up here and look at that so I don't know if you can see it wiggling there's a little bit of space on either side of it I want that little bit of space on either side of it to accommodate these two things so now let's glue these reels to that uh, our little aluminum piece all right, for my next act, we got to get this glued on to the rail or the reels here. Uh, let's see. I don't know if you can tell. This one right here is right side up. This one's upside down. You're just going to have to look at the detail on them as best as you can. I know it's hard to make out on the camera. Again, this is really tiny, but uh, flip them both over upside down so that the boring side is in. Go to your piece of aluminum, stick it like so, dip it in a little bit of super glue, do the best you can to get it right dead center on that reel, like that. There we go, like that, so it's on there. Then give that a moment to set up. All right, now that that's set up, you just do the reverse, pick this up, dip it into the glue, set it down onto the other one, and then you get this piece. We're going to do some close-up shots here at a different angle uh, so you can see it when this is done. And then just let it, let it, let it be for a few minutes and let the aluminum sub. You don't have to use aluminum, you can use styrene rod, uh, you can use a wood dowel, wh what, whatever you have. Um, I'm using aluminum because that's what I have and yeah, that's it. All right, there it is, uh, the two pieces assembled. Just gonna pan around real quick here. So just let it set up. Now what we're gonna do next is probably apply some glue with the toothpick uh, to right here and here and I'll probably tape this thing down and then I can grab this right in the middle of the tweezers and we'll drop it into the center there when it's set up. Alright there's our piece I just took some Tamiya tape and flipped it doubled it up on itself to hold everything in place. Uh, let's grab some thick well it's actually uh, medium viscosity Cyanoacrylate super glue, toothpick, just apply a good healthy dab right there. Gotta grab our piece, hope it doesn't roll away. And let's see, we gotta do a little adjustment here. I'd open it up just a little bit. There you go. Force it right down in to the center and just leave it be. Here, we'll take it off and take a look at it up close now. All right, there it is. Super teeny tiny. Try and keep it in focus here. But I think it looks really good. And of course, it's all brass and aluminum, which is sharp. So all I gotta do is that uh, at least five more times for the pieces I wanna replace. You could go ahead and wrap string around it um, to simulate your stuff. I'm, I'm just gonna paint them black, that's what I, I'm gonna paint this whole thing with an airbrush and then I'll paint the middle black uh, to simulate my hosing and stick it in place. That's what I did on the, on the bow of the ship and it looked good. So uh, off to spray paint and then we'll get them installed. But anyway, that's how I make these really tiny little parts. Let's slide a dime in here. As you can see that it's, it's small, super, super small. All right, pressing on. So here's the one that I installed the kit part. Uh, this is the photo etch piece. 
uh, which you can see is a little bit more petite and a little more detailed. Uh, I don't know, I guess call the ship people over and have them cut off the old one because we don't want that anymore. Uh, the new one, this is photo etch and that's obviously um, plastic isn't going to stick with uh, regular glue so you're gonna have to grab yourself some super glue and off camera all I'm doing is dipping this in the super glue in the base and we'll reapply it to where the old one goes. Sorry, I know my hand's in the way. We'll just stick it like that and let the glue set up. And that's it. Uh, I'll touch up the paint a little bit and we'll be fine. So I'm going to go ahead and replace um, the other four uh, just the same way as that. I think that's a little bit of an improvement. Let's see if I can zoom in a little here. All right, after moving the camera, zoomed in just a little bit so you can make out what the new one looked like, and I think it looks sharp. So now we just, like I said, get a focus, autofocus there, uh, replace the other ones, and we'll move on to the next section. All right, as mentioned before, this is where uh, a total of six bofers go, and you got to build up these huge, big things. And then there's a bunch of detail that goes in the middle here, primarily some in whip antennas. So I'm going to take a look at the instructions, and in the next shot, you'll probably see that the uh, weather deck blue has been extended into here. And then uh, I'll whip up the photo etch antennas, they're just little pieces, and they get glued into place. And we'll secure them in the middle, I think, because then we'll add these parts, uh, maybe. I gotta check the order of operations here because I might be better off waiting until later to glue in the antenna whips. But for sure this has to be painted. So let's make some decisions and I'll get back to you. Okay, so I've gone ahead and painted this middle section here. We'll worry about some of these details later. Uh, what I did do though is I grabbed all the parts that get put together over here and uh, basically I'm like well let's just see how this all like fits right and it all kind of goes together like this there's a couple other little side pieces and then you get this piece goes here and this piece goes here so when you're done it'll look really cool but there is a ton of photo etch from Pontos that gets installed all throughout here. And attempting to install any of it while this is all assembled like this would be a catastrophe. Fortunately, uh, we have access to all kinds of things. You know, if we take it all apart, suddenly you can get into every little nook and cranny just about for everything. So uh, at this point, <laughs> everything's been sanded sanded. I know it all fits together nicely. Um, we're going to start on the photo etch detail and start assembling this stuff so that we can put it all together just like you see there. All right, let's let's get to that. Okay, so in determining which steps to take, uh, we're going to start out with this piece, the photo etch first, and we're going to put in all the ammunition racks that run all around these edges before we do anything else uh, to this piece. And here are the instructions. It starts out on the starboard side. That's the primary one. And this is our starboard piece. Um, and basically what you need to know is, let's just start in this corner, for example. Piece 7A1 is the first one that goes in. 7B1 is the second. C, and then there isn't one after that. And so forth, all the way up, right? So start in this order. Um, this is what we're doing. We're putting in all of those ammunition racks that you see right there. I do want to point something out. Uh, I'm sure I'll mention it again when we get to it. But if you look in the back here, you could see brass plates put in up against the wall. Now, 
According to the instructions, those brass plates are actually supposed to be guides to drill holes to put in the individual ladder rungs that you see here, which we will I will show that in detail. I think the issue is that this back wall is so thin, you actually do need the plate installed there to hold your piece in place, because otherwise if you try and drill just a tiny little hole, you're going to poke out on the other side. Uh, and that's fine with me, it just makes that section a little bit easier. So we're going to start by installing these pieces next, per the instructions. Real quick before we start in the photo etch uh, order operations, because I want the floor to be the weather deck blue and then the sides to be our gray, and I'm, I'm going to paint all that, you need to absolutely paint the floor first. So I masked off the walls and painted it. I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to put um, big Tamiya tape over the top of the floors so when you see them next they'll be yellow. Then we'll install uh, the photo etch all the way around. When that's installed and done I can airbrush it uh, and then pull the masking off of the floor and we'll have our two-tone colors. Uh, I already did this over here just like that and that's the end result so that's the reason for this step. Okay let's get to the point where we can start installing photo etch. Okay so I picked out a little curved section uh, we're gonna start with piece 7A1 B and C and got our piece of glass let's just get it cut out this is the ammo racks for the uh, 40 millimeter bofers that you would put I'm assuming that actually they would be clips because they're holding the ammo they're not magazines uh, but that's the piece so what you'll see is this part displayed and then these tabs would be the item of interest for everyone so take the little tab find your spot and that's what you're looking for right there so what you actually see right now it might be upside down but those two tabs these two tabs are going to sit on the floor and the back side this brass part will be up against the wall and then you have your rack that's how you get the spacing uh, for the piece so let's show that okay this is actually a lot easier to install than the other ones uh, so just take some super glue I know this is out of focus here, but we're going to apply some glue to the back of those tabs. Then grab your part. And center it up right where it goes. And make sure the two little tabs, as you can see there, touch the floor. and should be pretty even like so there's one installed and the next one is gonna go up right on top of it so it is kind of important that you get the bottom one uh, in the right position let's let's do the next one okay more of the same for the second piece prepare it the same way and come in, set in just above the previous one, like that. See how those tabs stack on top of each other, like that? And then you get the look like this. We got one more to go. Let's get the third one in there. All right, here's the third one. Same thing, just like that. Drop it in like so, and there you go. This is the cool looking um, ammo racks, and you really only see the top one like that, but at an angle you'll see all three. Now, all we have to do is rinse and repeat all the way around this whole thing, which I'll go ahead and do. It's the same thing. Uh, let's not be delusional though. Um, this one is going to be a lot more difficult because the curved piece is bigger and on the circular round tubs on the main part of the ship where you have uh, whole big sections like like this piece for example 17B1 it's one giant thing it's hard to do because 
if the piece, imagine this continuing around as one piece, becomes uneven up and down, you lose horizontal. It's got to stay flat or you run into a lot of trouble getting it to fit. You also have to make sure it retains the same curve. So uh, this was the biggest curved section I could find to show you guys on this piece. But uh, we'll get the rest installed and then move on to probably these plates and things right here. So pressing on. There we go. Uh, they're all installed all the way around the back. I will point out quickly for those of you doing this, these back corner ones right here uh, required a little bit of shaving to get to fit. They were just a little bit wide. And then uh, the same was true with those three right there. I had to take off the edge just a little bit. Now, this piece fits into place like this. And we have uh, some ladders that are going to go in the front right there. You can see the kit ones. Those will have to be um, sanded off. And then we also have ladders that go... I'm sorry, not ladders, but more ammo racks that go here and here. And you can see the little metal lines. So I'm going to sand these off, and then I'll install uh, the brackets there as well. And then there's a whole set that goes up here um, that also go on the outside. But there's also um, brackets to go in here. And if I'm going to be holding this you know, like this and trying to put stuff in here, I'm probably going to damage these. So the next move is going to be to install these. Then I'll just uh, install the exterior ones here, sand this off, install those, and then we'll have this whole assembly ready to go like that. And then we get to deal with the back wall and the ladders in the front. So that is what you'll see next. All right, so we have all of the uh, ammo racks installed right there Oop, dropping things and then uh, over here and so this goes like that and you get this cool look so the next thing we need to do is install on this piece uh, some ladders and they go right up and down here and they're the individual handrails so let's show how to do that um, it's you're gonna need a uh, 0.3 millimeter drill which is this tiny tiny thing it's so small in fact on mine you get to focus you can see that I've got a tiny piece of tape wrapped around it because the pin vise actually couldn't hang on to the thing yeah I know it's crazy so uh, first thing we'll do is get a template cut out. Alright, so here's our piece and then this is our little template and these pieces by Pontos are great. You, you basically just find the spot that matches up uh, the edge and what you gotta do then really is tape it into position. And this is kind of an awkward piece because there's no good place to get it taped down for everything. So I'm just gonna start right off here in the middle. Get it lined up with my edge. And stick the tape down. All right, double check it. There, looks good. So now, uh, when I drill these, what I do with this pin vise is I drop it in the hole, and I just go one, two, three. And I stop. The next one. One, two, three. And I'm not pushing, this is just the weight of the drill pin vise itself. 
one, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, now I'm gonna apply tape to the top and bottom so I can get this middle one off and drill those out. And then we'll pull this off so you can see what it looks like. All right, so I've switched to the other camera while the primary one uh, charges. Hopefully you can make out those holes. I cleaned them up a little bit. Um, I've switched to a set of more blunt um, tweezers. And you can see there I've picked up a rung. Off camera, I'm just gonna dip the ladder rung into some super glue. And you just line it up with the little holes that you made. Whoop, get it all go in. That's it. And then um, double check it that you've got it going perpendicular to the side of the hall that it's on. Right? So that it's not canted up or down a little bit. And uh, that's it. Just proceed on down. You just got to take your time and go slow. Having the holes uh, prepped and ready to go is key. Having um, some tweezers that you like and know you can use are very important. And that's it. Just work your way, whatever you prefer, top to bottom. Do a couple. The big thing here is uh, don't rush yourself. And so what I like to do so I don't lose anything is I cut out three or four rungs at a time so I don't lose them. And then uh, very carefully install them. And once they're installed, I just stop and I cut out some more. And what that does is it forces me to take just a little bit of break, reset, take a deep breath, um, and get situated to do the next ones. Because if you just try to cut out all of them at once, first of all, you're going to absolutely lose several of these things. And then uh, you're going to get distracted at some point you're gonna run out of patience at some point something's not gonna go right you'll bump it I mean there's a whole list of miniature disasters you can have and that's it uh, the holes are a little bit bigger than what you need so it's important that you take the time to make sure that they're laterally you know they match one another the parallel all the way down um, and that's it. So we got what, five more to go here, and we'll have those installed. And that's how I install all of the ladders. So let's get those done, and then the other ladders put together. It's the same process. Stick your template on, put the drill on, spin it three times, take it off, double check that you can see your holes, clean them out if you need to, and then, uh, yeah, just, just put it together. That super glue is just going to hold it in. They are fragile, but once you get a nice coat of paint on, light layers built up with the um, airbrush, the paint will itself will also help uh, hold your ladder rungs into position. So let's make all that happen here. Okay, so we've got these little ladders right here in the front, and then in the back corner, uh, we've got some more. Now, earlier I had placed in this back corner... Um, the ammo racks, which I discovered from the pictures and instructions, are actually supposed to go over there. Uh, a little confusion with the way the instructions were set up. Now, that piece in the back corner that you're seeing right there has a brass uh, wall. It's just like the guides used to uh, drill the holes. The thing is, on the back right here, this plastic is very thin. And you will actually have to attach another ladder on the back side of this coming up. So I don't think drilling through both sides is very conducive. And so uh, you end up with that brass piece to put in instead. And so that works out nicely. So now we have uh, pretty much everything done. There's a, there's a piece of railing that goes in the front here. But I'm going to wait until after we've painted everything to 
mess with that. Um, the only thing really left to do now is airbrush this. Uh, and here's the other one. All the ladders are right in place there as well. So, um, yeah, I think I'm going to double check. We might have to put a couple more parts on, but it's, I think it's time to go to paint. And then we're going to start working on these back walls here. So let's figure that out. Okay, so this is it all glued, well, the two halves glued together, and I pulled the masking off, and it's painted, so you can see what it looks like. Uh, pretty neat. There's no weathering, anything like that, um, and we're set. Now, uh, we gotta put some railing on the front here, which we could do now, I guess. Uh, the next issue, though, is this back piece, and it's a thing because it goes on like like this. It's a li little bit low actually right there. Clip it into place. Uh, we do have a couple of um, right here and here we have gun directors that need to be mounted in place and glued. But it hangs off the bottom like you see there. So uh, what I did is I, I, I put it up here and I scored some lines so that I have a reference because there's a bunch of um, photo etch, those brass plates go on here with some racks and some ladders. And it'd be nice to put them on there. And then on the back side, there's more photo etch. There's stairs and stuff that go into place and a big bracket that comes up here. And I'd like to put all of that on uh, and work all that out prior to mounting this to the rest of the superstructure because I'll have to reach in here at a certain point there's ladders that go from here down and they aren't they're just they'll just be hanging off the bottom uh, those may actually get installed after I drop this onto the superstructure so uh, the next steps are just kind of a repeat of before I'm gonna start I think over here I'll glue these pieces on and paint them up and then probably yeah glue whoops sorry about the what you call it over there sorry about the compressor anyway and then uh, glue what I can on here and paint it then stick this all together I'm trying to minimize painting I'm trying to minimize uh, having to paint stuff separately photo etch wise and then stick it in place so anyway uh, that's this section for right now. Let's let's get this cool stuff put on. All right, so I did my uh, all my test fitting and measuring and double checking and uh, lining up and figured out um, where these pieces go exactly, and so I'm ready to stick. Uh, these two on shouldn't be much of a, a thing. But I verified that they're lined up exactly with the top. Sorry, I just put that all out of focus. I'm sorry, or out of frame. Uh, if they're lined up exactly with the top, that they'll fit just fine where they need to. So that's that one. And I'm going to do this one right here let's set up a little proud right there I'll double check it if I have to move it pop it off of here uh, it's not gonna be a big deal Back here, I realized I got a little ahead of myself. This plate is supposed to drop down right there. And those brackets right there are supposed to be mounted on here. So I'm going to have to pop those off. No big deal. Uh, I'll glue them onto here. And I'll glue in the, um, the, I'll glue the ladders in everything and paint it up. And then I'll drop it in there. Uh, that's just going to have to be the way that one is. Would have liked to have caught that earlier, but I didn't. So anyway, uh, let's do that. 
All right, before we head off to paint, here's the part. I know some of you are gonna wanna see it on the brass. Uh, I think we will paint it and install it and then worry about the ladders and everything in the back here. I have a plan uh, that I'll share with you. And if it doesn't work out and it's a huge catastrophe, I won't repeat it for the other side. So let's get this stuff painted and start putting it together. All right, sorry the uh, furnace is running. It's chilly outside. So basically I had to glue this piece onto the superstructure where it mounts and then um, that's because of the way this back piece fit. I mean it fits fine when we look at it from over here. It's going to slide on like that and there you go it looks glorious uh, but on the back um, things don't line up as perfectly it's just kind of the, the kit parts. So let's glue this in place and then I'll spin it around so you can see what I'm talking about and why we're just going to do the rest of it in place. Alright, so here it is installed. So as you can see there's a bit of a gap right along the top here where this didn't end up flat and it doesn't line up perfectly right there either. But it is flush on the deck and the tubs are all sitting down they're supposed, the way they're supposed to be. So I don't know if this is a trumpeter thing or if I misaligned something, I'm not quite sure. Uh, but I'm going to double check how the uh, directional finder um, sits up here and maybe I'll fill this seam, maybe I won't. Over there I'm pretty sure I can make it work the way that it's supposed to. Now that it's in place, I, I wish I hadn't glued it down. I glued, I glued this down and then I glued um, this piece in place and I, I kind of had to because there was really only one little narrow attachment point along here. I would have liked to have glued this back piece on here and kept it separate so that it would be easier to install everything that goes on the back side here. Um, it won't be too big of a deal obviously it's readily available right now but that's the starboard side when I do the port side located right here gonna have to be a little bit more creative so I'll just have to work through that process. But for now, uh, we'll press forward with getting all this stuff on here and we'll do a little bit of masking of the floor to finish up, touching up the paint and everything like that. And uh, see if we can't wrap this section up. All right, one last look. Finally got all of the photo etch on. There's the little uh, rail right in the front. You can see there's remnants of paint on it because I had to start painting the back side of it uh, before I got installed. And then there's uh, a little ladder right up in the front there and let's spin around and look at what we've got in the back. Alright, as you can see the back side basically lots of ladders and some rungs uh, all installed ready to go. I just need to paint them up. You can see my big globby fingerprints on there. Uh, yeah, that's basically it. Um, the only thing worth pointing out is these two rails right up in the top here they're labeled 737 instructions. That's completely wrong. I think they're labeled, I think they're actually number 693 or something like that. They are not labeled 737, but they are on the same sprue as all the other parts that you need. So that's it. Let's get it uh, painted up. All right, that's it. It's all painted up. I haven't weathered it yet, but uh, I went ahead and got all of the photo etch installed obviously and painted so it looks good there's some touching up that needs to be done but that's it that's the uh, starboard anti-aircraft gun main section will have three bofers up in there and uh, there's the ammo racks and everything installed so anyway uh, what I would like to do differently next time I think is set this position this piece into place and go way out of my way after I've installed the uh, fixtures on the back wall to then glue this to this piece and still be able to remove it. That way uh, everything that you see here on the back, make it all fit in the shot, uh, is a lot more accessible for painting and setting up and you know will be easier to deal with. So. Uh, that's all I've got for now, folks. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, it takes a lot to get this kind of content put together, but um, 
yeah, I think it looks good. A lot of effort. Uh, this will be a pretty neat area once we're all done with the rest of the ship. All right, take care.